The U.N. calls climate change the defining crisis of our time. It has become a buzz term for governments, businesses, and at dinner tables. But the irony is that it's not just about reusable straws and saving the turtles. It turns out the very thing that's keeping us alive is cooking the planet, food. A fruit production accounts for roughly a third of the world's greenhouse gas emissions each year. That's more than double the entire annual emissions of the U.S. And meat is by far the biggest culprit, accounting for more than half of greenhouse gases. Let's take a piece of steak, for example. Producing a single serving of beef emits about 330 grams of carbon dioxide. That's the same as driving a car for around five kilometers. So what we put on our plate matters a lot. Without making significant changes to the way we eat, scientists say limiting global warming is an impossible task. Reforming the food system will require new corporate practices as well as new laws at the national and international levels. Some say treating beef like coal would make a big dent in greenhouse gas emissions. But individual consumer behavior matters too, and probably more than we think. Experts say trading your burgers and beef rundown for plant-based varieties is one of the best things you can do as a consumer for the environment. But the all-or-nothing way is a tall order for some. So that's where lab-grown meat comes in. Can cultured meat save the planet? Is it healthy and can it replace real meat? I sat down with CEO of Eat Just, Josh Tetrick, for a taste. It is real chicken. It's just made in a different, more sustainable, safer uh, way. Uh, I do think for some period of time that consumers do need a, a, a distinction uh, between this and conventional meat. My preferred term is cultivated meat. It, as close as we can, gives an accurate description to what it actually is. It, it starts with a cell, then we identify nutrients to feed the cell, and then we scale it up in a stainless steel vessel called a bioreactor. We cultivate it or culture it. Um, we don't need billions of animals. We don't need over a third of the world that is used today to plant soy and corn to feed the animals that we all consume, which is really bizarre when you think about that's how we use over a third of our planet. Uh, we can make it um, in, a, in a much more efficient way. And I think cultivating meat probably is the best way of expressing it. It's very good. Um, the taste, the smell, and the texture is exactly like the regular chicken nugget that I'm used to. But Josh, let's say I eat cultivated meat every day. Would it still be healthy and safe? So it's not something that I want uh, folks to have three, four, or five times a day. Now, where it is better from a health perspective than conventional meat is it's uh, free of antibiotics, free of hormones, no trace of salmonella or E. coli, or certainly no risk of zoonotic disease. But it does have saturated fat. It does have dietary cholesterol. Now, what we're interested in longer term, the next three, five, 10 years, is potentially we can make cultivated meat that actually has less saturated fat or is entirely free of dietary cholesterol. So you have a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more of a toolkit when you don't have billions of animals hanging out in a warehouse and you have sort of the contained environment of a stainless steel vessel in which you're, you're, uh, you're making the meat. So what sort of level of adoption would we need to see be around the world before the benefits are realized? Ultimately, every person that chooses to eat a chicken and waffle dish or chicken and bow in Singapore is having an impact. So we don't need to, to make billions of pounds of meat to have an impact. But the goal here is to make it so the vast majority of meat that is consumed on our planet doesn't require the slaughter of an animal, doesn't require the use of all that land. So I want more companies to get in the space. So there are over 100 companies uh, out there and not just um, startups, uh, not just food technology companies, even big meat companies like JBS. Uh, they recently announced a $100 million investment. So I, I hope many more companies, I hope someone watches this and decides I want to start a company that, that outcompetes what we're doing at, uh, at, at, at Good Meat. Well, speaking of your goals, you said in one of your interviews that cultivated meat would eventually be so ubiquitous that it will be boring. But convincing people to switch from a familiar to something exotic may prove difficult. So what makes you so sure about that? Um, the things that we think are bizarre in the moment end up being boring later. Um, streaming music, uh, television, smartphones, electric cars, and cultivated meat seems new and maybe a little strange to people right now, 
but eventually it's going to be boring. It, it's not going to just happen by accident. Uh, it's going to happen because we and other companies build the capacity to make it so. We learn from consumers. We continue to make the products better. We don't just focus on chicken, but we launch beef and pork and eventually get into seafood. Uh, but um, I, I feel good about where the economics are, um, what consumers at the end of the day want. Um, and it's going to be a long road, uh, but uh, it's it's uh, it's worth it to fight for. And we can't ignore the higher price tag, Josh. Of course, there's been a tremendous improvement from the $300,000 lab-grown burger from a few years ago, but it may still be too high for typical consumers of chicken products. Will it remain a super premium product for at least a few years to come, or could we potentially see price parity in the near future? We're not making a lot of it. Right. We got to make more. Um, and it's only when we make a lot more, the cost going to come down. But we see a path where this ultimately is at or below the cost of conventional meat. And that's when things are going to shift dramatically. And we understand e just is in the process of submitting other forms of chicken for approval and working on Wagyu beef and pork. How are these coming along? Julie, if it is meat, we're going to do it. So you're, I'm talking about we're eventually going to get the pork chops and bluefin tuna and burgers and steaks and all those things are along our product pipeline, but it starts with chicken. We were fortunate to receive regulatory approval to expand the, the universe uh, beyond the chicken bite that we're uh, privileged to be able to sell uh, in Singapore. So there we'll have to think about dishes that incorporate chicken breasts. We'll have to think about shredded chicken. You know, what is the best dish? to show off uh, shredded chicken. And it's yet another step uh, in our, our, our long journey here uh, to make this the meat, not, not just an option.